On today's episode, I want to show you my Lightroom workflow when I'm working with DxO software such as DxO Pure Raw and Photolab 4 for doing noise reduction and sharpening. Stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. Yeah, on today's episode, I want to show you my DxO noise reduction and sharpening workflow when I'm working with Lightroom. The other day I showed you my uh, Topaz Denoise and Sharpen AI workflow, but today it's going to be DxO. And I'm going to start out with uh, DxO Pure Raw. And then I'll show you how to do the same thing if you have uh, DxO Photolab 4. Now I got to tell you this, if you already own DxO Photolab 4, you don't really need DxO Pure Raw because you can do the same thing in both pieces of software. DxO Pure Raw is for noise reduction, sharpening, and lens corrections, whereas Photolab 4 does all that and it's a full editing solution as well. But if you want to use it solely for uh, denoising, sharpening, and lens corrections, and then use Lightroom for all your editing and use, like for me, linear profiles, then this uh, Lightroom DxO workflow will really help you out. On the screen right now is a page out of the DxO Pure Raw online user's guide. Now, you may want to pause the video and stop and take a look at what uh, DxO Pure Raw will do for your images, as well as uh, Photolab 4 will do the same thing to your images. As far as noise reduction is concerned, there's three different types of noise reduction. There's HQ, Prime, and Deep Prime denoising we're going to be looking at Deep Prime, which is their best noise reduction, and it works with artificial intelligence, and it's very good. And it's right on par with Topaz Denoise AI. However, Topaz Denoise AI is my favorite noise reduction software. But when you use DxO noise reduction and sharpening solutions, you do get the added bonus of being able to work on your images as raw files, and they remain raw files even after you've applied noise reduction and sharpening, which is really nice. Now I'll show you how DxO Pure Raw works, and then we'll move into Photolab 4. But I do want to say this, when you're using uh, DxO Prime or Deep Prime noise reduction, it will only work on raw files. Now there are, it works on most cameras out there in the market today. There's a lot of different Fuji cameras that it will not work on, however. Well, enough of all that. Let's get into how this works. Now, this is DxO Pure Raw version 1.2. Now, I don't own this software because I already own Photolab 4, so I don't really need it. So I went ahead and downloaded a free trial just to try it out. It's a really simple piece of software to use. Now, you can drag or drop images into it. You can add photos by clicking right here, or you can come and add photos by clicking up here. I'm just going to click right here, add photos. My file browser opens up. Now you can use this as a batch processor, but today I'm going to show you a single image edit. So I'm going to choose one of these three, one of these three raw files. I'm going to choose this guy right here and click open. And when I do, you'll notice you'll see the thumbnail up here. Now at this point, all you need to do is click process photos and it'll go ahead and process the photo. Now it's going to give you some options here. And this is nice. It says process one photo. You can e choose either HQ processing. That's just the basic uh, noise reduction processing, prime or deep prime. Now, I recommend deep prime. It's artificial intelligence. And to me, it gives you the best results. And notice something interesting here. It tells you the times for each of these. For my computer, it's telling me that uh, HQ is going to take about 16 seconds when I click on it. If I choose Prime, it's going to take about a minute. But if I choose Deep Prime, it's only going to do it in 9 seconds because I believe it's using the graphics processor of my computer to uh, speed up the results. So it's a lot quicker. So it's actually the fastest way to get the job done, and it's the best. And you have a choice here. Do you want it as a JPEG or a DNG? Well, I want to keep it as a RAW file for my workflow in Lightroom, which you'll see upcoming here shortly. And then you have a choice of the destination folder. In my case, I'm going to keep it right in the, uh, the original folder. Okay, so it'll drop it inside of that folder. And then you can make a custom folder if you want, and you can go ahead and select whatever that custom folder is. And then all you have to do at this point is click process. Now, when you click process, it's going to add noise reduction. It's going to do lens corrections. It's going to correct for vignetting of your camera lens. It's going to do all that stuff. And also, it will sharpen your image. Now, it won't take care of out-of-focus issues like Sharpen AI does. Like, for instance, if you misfocus or you had some camera shake, it can't fix that. 
but it will go ahead and sharpen your image and it does a beautiful job. Now, whenever you shoot with Camera Raw, your images are always a little bit on the soft side. And this is more of that capture sharpening where it's going to take that soft Camera Raw image and give you a real nice sharpening. And then all you need to do is click process here and you'll notice you'll see um, a bar, a progress bar goes across the bottom. And again, it's going to take about nine seconds and it's going to be done. And now it's done. And it says, what do you want to do next? Do you want to view the results? And if you click here, you can view the results and zoom in. I'm not going to do that just to save time, but I'm going to tell it to export to. Now it's giving me choices here. I can export this to Lightroom Classic, which is what I want. Or I can go straight into uh, Photoshop and it'll open up Camera Raw in Photoshop. But in my case, I want to go to Lightroom Classic. And you can also export the original RAW file along with it if you want to, but it's already there for me in Lightroom, so that would be redundant. I don't need to do that. I can just click Export, and then it opens up Lightroom, and it brings me right into the uh, Import section of Lightroom. And you'll notice it says it's already selected Add for me because it's going to keep it right where it was. And then if you check on Build Smart Previews, it'll go ahead and do that. And now I have here uh, Apply During Import lens corrections i always do that for all my images but when i'm using photo raw i don't have to do that because it's already done it for me so i can go ahead and say none here okay and i'm not gonna you can give it keywords and do whatever you want and then i'm just going to click import and in a second or two here you'll see here's my image uh it built a smart preview because i've told it to build smart previews the next thing i always do is come to the image right click it and say go to folder and library and when you do it'll highlight that folder but notice something interesting here it's inside of this folder that i made for this video called DxO Lightroom workflow video and I have four images in it where actually there was three now there's four because this uh, DxO deep prime raw file was in there now but it also put it inside a category or I'm sorry inside its own folder called DxO so if I click uh, right here on DxO Lightroom workflow video you'll see all of my images in here and you'll notice this image image number uh, 0259 DNG with the suffix DxO deep prime after it denoting it came from pure raw which is really nice right next to the original uh, DNG file so it's right there but it's also in its own subfolder so all your images go into a subfolder and I thought that was pretty clever by DxO to design pure raw to put the image into a subfolder inside its original folder that was pretty clever and now to edit it in lightroom just come over and click on your develop module and you'll notice inside of basic i have my profiles here my camera profiles all inside of here and even my linear profile that i love to work from now which is really cool all your profiles are there unlike when you're using topaz denoise ai or sharpen ai they are gone and then, of course, you have all your adjustments here. And you also have all your uh, white balance camera settings here, your auto, your daylight, your cloudy. You have all that stuff there for you. Now, what I do is you don't, if you come to detail, make sure your sharpening and everything is shut off because you don't need sharpening or noise reduction because it's already been done for you in camera raw. And the other thing is lens corrections. Make sure these are not turned on because you've already done lens corrections. And then from this point, you just go ahead and do your basic editing, editing here. And then you can send it into Photoshop for further processing if needed. Now let me show you the process for using PhotoLab 4. So let's go back to the library module. And let's go to this uh, folder right here where I have my different images in here. And I'm going to, and you can batch process in uh, PhotoLab 4 as well, but I'm just going to do one image, and that's this one right here. Because generally I am doing like a single edit at a time. So I'm going to take this image right here. Now, here's the workflow to get this into PhotoLab 4. Select your image, and then come up to File, and then you want to come to. Um, Plugin Extras, okay, Plugin Extras, and then you're going to look for Transfer to DxO PhotoLab 4. Click on that. It'll prepare the image, and it'll send it into PhotoLab 4. As you can see, PhotoLab 4 is firing up for me right now. This is all in real time, by the way. Isn't that a cool satellite dish right there? 
pretty cool image on there. And in a sec, we will see Photo Lab 4 come up. Now, here it is here. Now, remember, oh, this is a splash screen that comes up now. I'm going to close it for now. Now, remember, uh, Photo Lab 4 is that you can do a, an entire editing process in here, but I my workflow today is to use Lightroom as my processor, but I want to take advantage of noise reduction and sharpening inside of Photo Lab 4 as well as lens corrections. So all I want to do is go to this icon right here, and inside of here it has my noise reduction, which I'm going to choose Deep Prime. By default, lens sharpness is turned on, chromatic aberration is turned on, and it is also doing uh, lens vignetting corrections, but you're going to find that under this light tab right here, and right here, you see that's on by default right here, and it's using the DxO optics module to do that. Now, all I need to do at this point is click export to Lightroom. Now, I'm not doing any other adjustments in here, okay, but this is very important, and follow me closely here, under format, Click this drop down menu here. Now you can export this as a JPEG, as a TIFF, as a DNG with all corrections applied. And that's what you would use if you were to do your editing process in here. In other words, adjust your lighting and your color and all that. But I'm not using it for that. I'm only using it for, you know, lens corrections, denoising, and sharpening and uh, correcting any uh, lens vignetting issues, okay? So I want to choose this option here. Export as a DNG, denoise, and optical corrections only. Very important. Make sure you have that selected. And once you do that, all you have to do is click Export. And it'll go ahead and uh, export this image. And right down here, we can see it's exporting the image. And it's going to take, again, about nine seconds to get that job done. And as soon as it's done it'll send me back into Lightroom. Now you gotta wait here a few seconds because you're gonna find it's gonna put this in a collection inside of Lightroom. And I'll show you that in a second here as soon as it comes up. But just gotta wait a second here. Let's wait for it. I'll wait with you here. And it is putting it in right now. You can see it says importing the files and now it's in its collection right here. All right, so here it is in this collection. Okay, and it's in a it's in a folder called DxO Photo Lab. Now, if I right click on this and say uh, go to folder in library, look, it's in that same folder. It's also living in that collection. Okay, so it doesn't put it in that uh, sub folder, but it puts it in a collection for you. Okay, but I always right click and it sends me right here. And you'll notice here it says uh, DxO.dng. Now, if we click develop. It's the same deal here. We have uh, all our profiles are here for us that we can use any of these. And also under detail, I'm going to make sure my sharpening noise reductions are turned off. And I'm going to also make sure my lens corrections are not turned on. But now I can come here and do any adjustments I want. Now, this did the same job that uh, Pure Raw would have done. So again, if you own Photo Lab 4, you don't need Pure Raw. But I can zoom in and you can see there is not a lick of noise in this image and it is sharp. Now remember, like I said, unlike Topaz Sharpen AI, AI, it's good for capture sharpening, but not so good if you have focus issues like you know, your lens is out of focus because you didn't get the focus quite right in the camera or you had some camera shake and there's some movement there. Sharpen AI does a dream job at fixing those kind of problems like no other software that I know of. But for capture sharpening, this does a beautiful job. So in other words, if you have some focus issues, you still may need Sharpen AI to take care of those problems. But you can start out here with PhotoLab 4 for noise reduction and basic capture sharpening. Now let me do a really fast editing job in Lightroom and send this into Photoshop. This is not going to be 100% because I'm doing this fast, but I want to show you my Photoshop workflow. You know, I could come and adjust the white balance. I think it looks good. I'm just going to leave Adobe Color on for now. Normally I'm using... Um, my linear profiles but for now i'm doing this quick so uh i can adjust my exposure i'm just going to hit auto here and see what kind of a job i get well that's way too bright so i'm going to pull the exposure back and maybe pull my highlights back a little bit um maybe open up my whites a little bit more and i think my contrast looks pretty good yeah it looks pretty good right there and how about shadows 
maybe open up the shadows slightly. Vibrance and saturation looks pretty good. And then typically I'll go into HSL color and make some adjustments. But for now, I'm not going to mess with that. But let's say I'm happy with my results and I'm really not, but I want to get into Photoshop to show you how this works. So I'm going to right click this. I'm going to go to edit in. Now I'm not going to use edit in Photoshop 2021. I'm going to go ahead and use my new workflow that I'm using for both Denoise AI, Sharpen AI, and now uh, DxO products and open as a smart object in Photoshop. So now it's going to go ahead and open up Photoshop and you'll see this image here in a second in Photoshop. And here we are in Photoshop and uh, I have a smart object here. Now, the reason I do this, if I need to retweak, or what if I decided I want to use a linear profile in here so I could double click this smart object, that'll open up Adobe Camera Raw, not, not the raw filter, but the actual Adobe Camera Raw. And I could come in here and change my uh, profile to say like a linear profile if I wanted to or whatever. Or if I wanted to retweak, like maybe give it a little more contrast, maybe give it a slight amount of exposure you know, and click OK. And then I can come and do whatever I want. Now, if I needed to send this into Topaz Sharpen AI, and remember, this is a smart object. So if I come up here to filter and find Topaz Sharpen AI, and if I launch it here, it'll launch it as a smart filter. So I could come back and do some readjustments on it if I need to. I'm not going to do that now, but I just wanted to let you know that. And then I would go ahead and add, you know, whatever processing I need to the rest of the image. I could use my TK7 Go panel, use my luminosity mask, use my actions, use whatever I need to do. Send it into Topaz Studio 2, send it into Luminar, whatever. But that's all we need to do. And then when I'm done with everything, or say I'm finished editing for the day, I'm going to come back and work on it later. Say I only got this far. I made a smart object here. Okay, so now I can go back into camera raw and go ahead and take care of any issues that I missed in Lightroom. But say I'm done for now, I would just come up here to file and click save. And now the next time I open up Lightroom, it'll be there. And let me go ahead and close it out of here for now. I'm just going to type the X here. I've already saved it. Let's go back into Lightroom. And here's the image right here. All right. But let's pretend it's the following day and I want to do some further editing on this image. All I would need to do is make sure I'm on the proper image. And then on the image, just give it a right click. Come to edit in. And the last time I opened as a smart object, this time I want to open it as up here. Edit in Photoshop 2021. Now, this is very important. Don't edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. You want to edit the original because when you edit the original, if you have an image saved with a bunch of layers, it's going to open up with those layers on it. Okay. And that's very important. So edit original. Do not miss that step. Okay. And then just click edit and it's going to open Photoshop back up. And there you can see, here's my image as a smart object. And if I double click it, it'll take me into camera raw and there's all my adjustments on it right there. All right, and it's that simple. Make some changes and then click OK, and then you can do some further editing from there. But that's how simple it is. But that is my Lightroom workflow when I'm working with DxO, either DxO Pure Raw or DxO Photo Lab 4 for sharpening, denoising, and lens corrections. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I mean, DxO Pure Raw or Photo Lab 4. I mean, the noise reduction in there is amazing. And the actual capture sharpening for that initial sharpness of your image is amazing. It does a fantastic job. And DxO lens corrections are the best in the industry, in my humble opinion. Hey, if you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like, share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. Well, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.